My name is Mary Crabb. Um, I'm a basket maker, but I'm also a maths teacher, and I have a background in museum education. Coming to the museum today has brought all of those things together for me. In my own work, I like to include elements of maths that I enjoy. I like to put pattern and sequence. Um, I like to work with a lot of precision, very carefully. I like to include number in my work. I came to the Museum of English Rural Life first because I wanted to uh, contact the curator and find out about a basket in their collection that I was interested in. And that basket was a First World War artillery shell basket. And I was particularly interested in having a look at that basket because I've been researching my grandmother's boyfriend who was a soldier in the First World War and was killed in the Somme in July 1916. Cecil was my grandmother's boyfriend from 1915-1916 and I found out about Cecil because my grandmother had a photograph of him which she kept in her kitchen on a shelf above the kitchen table and as a child she used to take Cecil's photograph down and she would hold it on the table and tap it and say that's my Cecil and I never really knew a lot about him and um, I wish I'd asked her more about him. Uh, he was just a face in a postcard, but he was in uniform, a young man who was 18, and he came from Birmingham. He went to King Edward's school. He was obviously a man with a, a great future. He had um, a place at Cambridge to study classics, which unfortunately he never actually took because he left school just before he was 18 and he went to France and by the following summer he was um, killed in action. So that's my very small bit of information I have about Cecil. I have a photograph of him in a school play and he's dressed as a frog. It's a Greek play so he has a little hat on. Uh, he's probably about 15. Um, and there's a great contrast between Cecil dressed as a frog and Cecil dressed as a soldier. And those two images are, uh, well as a mother they're quite shocking to see a young, a young boy in a school play and then the next photograph of him as a soldier. So I know a little bit more about him than I did but he's, uh, he's an unknown person but we've adopted him in our family and we try and remember him when we can. So I'm Ollie Douglas and I'm, the, I'm a curator here at the Museum of English Rural Life at the University of Reading. Uh, the university has a, an extraordinary collection of objects, archives and library materials that chart the history of the English countryside. Included amongst these are an enormous number of uh, English baskets, so English country craft objects that, that connect to the, the ways in which people lived and worked in the countryside in the past. And these offer a, a snapshot into various aspects of the past. Um, so I was particularly interested with Mary's project, which uses an object from these collections as a way of hooking into narratives of the First World War, individual and personal stories that connect to her own personal history, her own family history. And this is a great example of how we like to work with the collections here at the museum. So today, Mary came to the museum to examine the basket in the collections. We've been up in the stores, we've taken a wander around, and I've showed her a number of objects that connect to First World War history and also the wider agricultural histories that the museum charts and records with its collections. We had a good chance to look at the basket and also to look at another basket that, that, that's very similar in character, an umbrella basket. Um, so it's very similar in form, although not in function. And we compared those, had a look at some other baskets and objects in the collection. I'm very keen to do something that uh, enables me to remember Cecil and almost for there to be a legacy that he leaves behind. So I've been using 
my own creative work to make some pieces that I hope capture something about him involving the facts and the figures of his life. So his date of birth, his date of death, his age, elements about his time at school at King Edwards. And within my own work, I like to problem solve and in a way make a problem for me to make. So I'm making some work that uses some elements of numbers such as binary coding and I'm putting those together with my basketry skills and I'm particularly interested in textile basketry and the connections between basketry and where it crosses over into textiles. So I've created a number of pieces that um, hopefully connect with facts and figures and also uh, the process of making and also problem solving as well. My grandmother kept her photograph of Cecil for over 76 years in mint condition and that seems a very long time to continue that act of remembrance so I've created some little motifs woven in paper and threads and each one represents one year of remembering. I'm particularly interested in the shell basket because I'm looking for an object that represents Cecil's time at the front. He wasn't there for very long and in fact my grandmother always thought that he was shot in the head on his first day in France. Whether that was the case or not I should probably never know but I do know that he volunteered for a trench raid and that was when he was killed in action. So the shell basket for me represents an object that would have been at the front. Um, and as a basket maker it's an interesting object too because it has a very um, complicated construction and that's why I've decided that I'd like to make a replica to add to the collection of work that I'm putting together on Cecil. The basket came into the collection at the Museum of English Rural Life in 1976 and it was brought in by a little boy called David, or rather his teacher brought it in for him. David was aged nine and from a local school, and it was brought into the museum as a, an object that David had found. At the time, it was unclear quite what it was, and it was accessioned as an umbrella holder, uh, which is quite a reasonable um, decision to make about the object, having maybe not seen one before. The shell basket at this museum uh, is rather interesting because it seems to differ greatly from the other shell baskets I've seen. It seems to be extra long by about 20 centimetres and I have no explanation for that really. The commonly used shell that I've come across is a quick fire 18 pounder shell which measures just over 50 centimetres. However, the shell basket here measures well over 70 centimetres, so it's quite a bit longer. As part of my research, I've been contacting people who might be able to assist me, and I've been in touch with the Imperial War Museum, who've been a great help in finding out a lot of information that I might not have access to. And there's a suggestion, and we probably will never know if this is the right answer, but it certainly fits the evidence that we have that this could possibly be a shell basket used in the limber of an anti-aircraft gun which would uh, explain the additional length of the shell to enable um, the shell to reach a great height and to go much further than the standard quickfire 18 pounder shell. So from the information the Imperial War Museum have provided me it seems that uh, the basket in this collection is really quite unusual and was uh, made for an experimental set of anti-aircraft guns mounted on lorries and these lorries were used in the area that the shell basket was found by the little boy David all those years ago in 1976. So this is my workshop, this is where I come to be creative and feel inspired and uh, around me I've got lots of things that uh, I find pleasing to look at, they give me some inspiration. Having the opportunity to look at the shell basket and research it, make drawings, take photographs has given me a great opportunity to revisit some of my 
basketry skills that I learnt over 10 years ago and it's taken me back to some of the traditional uh, skills that I learnt working with willow and uh, introducing me to new materials as well and then back full circle to working again with tools that I haven't worked with for probably 10 years and introducing me to some of those new materials like kubu cane that I haven't used before. Researching the shell basket and making the pieces that I've been working on regarding Cecil has been a great opportunity to give Cecil another lifetime. It's been a time for reflection, for going back and revisiting places that I've been before. Recently I visited Duxford and went to the stores and had the opportunity to view some of the shell baskets that they have in their collection. I've learnt an awful lot about researching an object and the sorts of information that you need. When you're with the object it's very easy to gloss over little details but when you get home and you are working your workshop trying to make sense of the diagrams that you've drawn and the photographs that you've taken um, you find that there's little bits of information that you may be missed out on and I found with the shell basket that I uh, missed having the opportunity to turn it around and uh, look at it from different angles. I only really photographed one side of it and didn't take the time to take a series of photographs to see how, for example, the weave around the bottom of the basket progressed as it turned around the circle. So the experience has been very worthwhile and certainly if I did it again, I would be taking more time and trouble to, to record it in a different way to make sure that I haven't missed any details out. The mill basket is unique in itself but is very similar to another basket that I've come across in the New Walk Gallery, Leicester. Um, both of them I think were probably made by Dryad and they look like they're made by a very industrial process um, and very well designed to match the purpose that they have. Whilst we were at Duxford we were able to see some other baskets which were different in design and um, I'm not clear from having looked at them yet as to quite how they were used um, and also how they were made. But again, I had the opportunity to take some photographs and make some drawings and look at the materials, which were really quite different from the ones on the Merle basket. There certainly wasn't the same split cane and the leather work uh, was very different on the uh, baskets at Duxford so if I go on to make some more shell baskets they'll certainly offer me some new challenges and I'll have to learn some more skills um, to be able to do that. In particular the, the leather work I think will be quite a challenge for me. Um, that's something new that I've never done before and um, I quite enjoyed having a, a sort of taster session of learning to work with leather so uh, I'm going to take that a little bit further and um, hopefully add the leather to the basket from the Merle design but also maybe try some of the Duxford ones as well. Earlier this year in July, on the 10th of July, um, I made the journey to France with my mum and my brother. It felt like an important journey to make. Since uh, my childhood, when I was first introduced to Cecil as being my grandmother's boyfriend, there's been a sense that maybe he needed to be found, he needed to be uh, remembered and the journey to France was specifically to visit his grave on the 100th anniversary of his death. It was a really important journey to make and I didn't know what to expect when I got there. I thought I might feel very upset maybe by being there, but in fact it felt like a circle had been completed. This person who'd been a part of my, my life, my childhood and now my creative life and I'd made the visit to France that perhaps my grandmother hadn't been able to do and of course I never knew if Cecil's family had been able to visit him either. I think it's probably changed the way that my creative work I'm making for Cecil is how I think about it now. Before there was a certain anxiety and need to make it, but now it feels like there's a need to complete it. There's a certain amount of peace that goes along with that. I, I've always had a dislike of lost things and I feel that uh, Cecil is no longer lost, that he's now found and uh, he's now very much part of our lives. It seems to me that the more I learn, the less I know. It's an ever-building journey where I'm learning more and more 
and uncovering more and more facts that I didn't know about. It's a very interesting time in history, I think, and a time of great change. And I've taken his photograph with me to talk to groups about my work. And it's really nice to have that chance to bring him into people's lives again and give him a, another chance to be seen and be loved by a new group of people. He certainly has done that. I've had an amazing response from the people that have seen the work that I've done. And I hope that in some way it enables my grandmother's desire to remember him for the rest of her life. I hope it enables that memory to continue so that my family remember him, but also other people think of him from time to time as well.